Here are the video solutions for Pearson NXL Functional Skills Maths Level 2. This is section A which is the non-calculator section and this is the practice exam for first teaching September 2019. Uh, so let's take a look at question number one. So for this question we know that the ratio of sand to cement is 24 to 5. And Bill has got 36 kilos of sand, so how much cement does he use? If it was 48, that would have been much easier because 48 is double 24, so if he's doubling the sand, he would be doubling the cement. The problem is we don't know exactly how many times greater 36 is than 24. However, hopefully you've spotted that 24 and 36 are both multiples of 12. So let's work out 12. So this is half the amount of cement uh, sand, so that would be half the amount of cement. So 12 kilos of sand would need 2.5 kilos of cement. Now 36 is three times greater than 12, so he's gonna need three times more than 2.5, which is 7.5. So that's 7.5 kilos of cement. Question number two, write 2.71828 correct to three decimal places so that means we're interested in the value of the fourth decimal place this eight it doesn't matter that's completely irrelevant it's just this number that matters it's less than five so this will round down to 2.718 part b we have been told that t is 10 well if p is three times t squared that's going to be three times 10 squared 10 squared is 10 times 10, which is 100. So the calculation is three times by 100, which is 300. Question number three. So the first thing we're gonna do is work out how, well, we know that she's bought the clocks for 50. What has she sold them for? Well, that's two times 22, which is 44. And another one for 20. So 44 plus 20, which is 64 pounds. So the profit she's made is £64, take away £50, which is £14. And she thinks she's made a profit of 30%. Well, is £14 30% of 50? What is it as a fraction of 50? Well, it's 14 over 50. So to turn this into a percentage, we're looking for an equivalent fraction out of 100. Remember, per cent means out of 100. We can see we've doubled the bottom number. So for an equivalent fraction, we need to double the top number as well. So the profit she made is 28%. So Lizzie is incorrect. Profit is 28%, not 30%. Okay, question number four. So the first thing I th that I think is sensible is turning um, these dimensions into meters. So one mile is 1600, so half a mile is going to be 800 meters. So let's work out the area. This is a triangle, it's eight, so the formula for the area of a triangle is base times the height divided by two. So we could just say that that is 800 multiplied by 400. Eight times by four is 32. And then just put those four zeros back in. There we go, so that is the area of the development. And the claim is that this is greater than the total area of 50 football pitches. So um, the area of a football pitch is going to be 50 times by 100. So that is 50 with two more zeros. 50 football pitches, 50 pitches. That is 50 multiplied by uh, 5,000. So five five to 25, put four zeros in. Okay, so we're comparing, um, she says the development is greater than 50 football pitches. So she's, I forgot, I forgot what her name was, has she got a name, Usher? Usher is correct as 320,000 meters squared is more than 250,000 square meters. There we go, and we are done on that part. 
Use reverse calculations to show a check of your answer. So we have done, um, first one of the calculations was 50 multiply, let's just scroll up again, 50 times 5,000 to get uh, 250,000. So the reverse calculation for that is 250,000 divided by um, 5,000 and that gives us 50. So that confirms that calculation. And there was another calculation, 800 times 400. So we said 800 times by 400 is 320,000. So the reverse calculation is 320,000 divided by 400. If anything, these reverse calculations are a bit silly, really, because these reverse calculations are much more complicated than the thing we were doing in the first place. Um, so if we're dividing by 400, we can knock off two zeros. 32 divided by four is eight. So 3,200 is going to be 800. Perfect. And so that is the, the check done. And that is the end of section A. Here are the video solutions for Pearson Edexcel Functional Skills Maths Level 2. And this is section B, which is the calculator section. And this is the practice exam for first teaching September 2019. So let's take a look at question number one. So we're just using this graph to convert 60 litres to gallons. So we've got litres along the bottom. So I'm going to go up at 60 litres and I can see that it hits the line two squares below this line. So if I just go across here, I can see a lot easier if you've got it in front of you, you with a ruler. Uh, we can see that that is going to be 13 gallons. Next part, one day An Anaya used 44 litres of fuel, Mira used 8 gallons of fuel, Anaya used more fuel than Mira, and we need to use the graph to work out how much more. Okay, well either we convert 44 litres into gallons, or we convert 8 gallons into litres. I'm going to try for 8 gallons into litres. So uh, we're going up in ones here, so 8 is 2 below 10, and it hits the line at this point here, which is two squares below 40. And um, here we're going up in twos. So that is, if this is 40, then four below 40 is 30, um, 36. So Mira uses 36 liters. So how much more does Anaya use? Well, 44, take away 36, which is eight liters. Okay, question number two. Okay, so we need to make sure we read the question carefully here. Um, this is not the, the total, um, we're not working out 70% of this amount. We know that 70% is 350 square kilometers. So if we want to work out the area that is uh, not native woodland, then that is the other 30%. So what is 30%? when 70% is 350. Now, both of these numbers are multiples of 10, so I'm gonna work out 10%. Now, that is uh, seven times less than 70%, so I need to divide 350 by seven, which is 50. So if 10% is 50 kilometers squared, 30% is gonna be 50 times by three, which is 150 square kilometers. Quite a tricky one, that one, so 150. Question number three, so the first thing we need to do is plot uh, 1,000 meters negative 13 degrees. So here we are, the height in meters is going across and we're going across in hundreds. So we'll find 1,000 and we want minus 13, minus 10, 11, 12, 13. It's quite hard to see because this pen is quite big. One, two, three, so just there we go. So at that point there. And for part B, we need to draw a line of best fit. So um, now a line of best fit is a line that cuts through the uh, the middle of all of the dots, uh, trying to keep a similar number of data points above and below the line. And if I asked uh, three people to do a line of best fit, I could get three different lines of best fit. It doesn't mean one would be wrong and uh, one would be right and two would be wrong. They might all be right. Um, 
So a line that goes right through the middle. So for example, this would be a terrible line of best fit because all the points are below it. This would also be a shocking line of best fit because all the points are above it, We're going right through the middle, like, yeah, like so. I'm not gonna stress myself by counting the number of dots above and below, but that's about right. And I'm sure that will be more than acceptable. And so for part C, we're gonna be used using this line of best fit to estimate the difference between the temperature at a height of 550 and a height of 900. So 550 is here, so I'm just gonna go down until I hit the line, which again, part of the problem with what I've done is this line is really fat. Um, so if you're using a sharp pencil, you'll get a much more precise value than I will. Uh, it is just an estimate, and for me that is negative uh, seven, and the other one was 950 meters. So again, it's slightly annoying that it's in between these two lines here. The, the marks are being awarded for you showing that you can uh, use a line of best fit to get an estimate. So it's about drawing these vertical and horizontal lines. So for me, that is coming along this line here approximately, which I believe to be minus 13. So what is the difference between negative seven and negative 13? Well, it's the same as the difference between 13 and seven, which is a difference of six. So six degrees difference. You might, um, using your line of best fit and your readings, you might get an answer which is slightly different. Um, I'm not, can't remember what the mark scheme says, but as long as you're using the line of best fit correctly, then all will be fine. Okay, so we need to work out the um, angle X here. So it, we've got a line of symmetry. If this is a right angle, then this here must be a right angle. So this here is a right angle as well. And a right angle is 90 degrees. So 125 degrees minus 90 degrees is 35. So this angle here is 35 and this angle here is also 35. So here we've got a triangle. 35 plus 35 is uh, 70 degrees. So 180 take away 70 is 110. So therefore X is 110 degrees. So for this question, we have been told density and we've been given the formula density is the mass divided by the volume. Now we want to work out the mass. So if I move the divide by volume over to the other side, it will become times the volume. So density multiplied by the volume equals the mass. So first of all, I'm gonna work out the mass of um, this concrete block. So the density is 2,300, and the volume is the three dimensions multiplied together. Now be careful because we've got meters here, meters here, and this is centimeters. So let's turn that into meters. So divide that by 100 is 0 0.12. So the volume is two times by 3.5 multiplied by 0 0.12 and that comes to 1,932 kilos. Now we also need to work out the mass of the metal strips. Um, so Nicola wants to put a metal strip along the along two of the longest edges of the roof. So we've got, that's the 3.5 meter side. So 3.5 plus 3.5 is seven. Probably should write that down. 3.5 plus 3.5 equals seven meters of metal strip. Now we know that one meter equals five kilos, so seven meters is going to be seven lots of five kg, so that's 35 kilos, so therefore the total weight is going to be the 1932 plus the 35, which is 1967 kilos, and that's the final answer, 1967. Okay, moving on to the next question. Work out the probability that the plant will have a large flower and a long stem. Okay, so stem length long, size of flower large, we can see that that is 29 out of how many? Well, we need to add the 10 plus the 13 plus the 43 plus the 29, which is 100. And that is our answer. As a fraction, this can't be simplified because 29 is prime. So that's 29 out of 100. Okay, the next part, Mai will take at random a plant from the 72 that have a large flower. So let's just, uh, just, just get rid of some of this. Okay, so um, he's taking 
a plant at random from the 72 that have a large flower. So this these two numbers add up to 72. So there's my 72, so that I could say that's just the total there. Um, and what is the probability that it will have a short stem? Well, of the 72, 43 have a short stem, so the probability is simply 43 over 72. And again, this fraction cannot be simplified because 43 is a prime number. Question number seven. Um, so what we need to do here is work out, first of all, uh, well, how many dresses are there in total? Well, the total is 12 plus 13 plus 19 plus 16 plus 17. So total number of dresses, 12 plus 13 plus 19 plus 16 plus 17 and that comes to a total of 77 dresses. So how many are on the correct hanger? Well these ones, uh, label says 10, it's 10. Label says 12, it's 12. So it's just going down this diagonal. So these are all the ones that are correctly labelled. So the correctly labelled dresses is 8 plus 9 plus 12 plus 13 plus 13 and that comes to 55. So correctly labelled is 55 out of 77 and both of these numbers are in the 11 times table. So if we divide top and bottom by 11 we get 5 sevenths. So 5 sevenths are correctly labelled. So therefore 2 sevenths are incorrectly labelled. Sally thinks that 2 in every 7, well that means 2 out of 7 and we've got 2 out of 7. So therefore Sal is correct. Okay, so for this question, um, we need to be careful here. It's the surface area we're interested in and not the volume. So we also need to think that um, we're not painting the top uh, because it's a water tank, so presumably needs to be open. So we've got the base, which is 1.1 times by 0 0.8. We've got the right-hand side, which is 0 0.8 times by 0 0.6. And the left-hand side is also the same, so it's going to be two of these. And we've got the front, which is 1.1 times 0 0.6. And we've also got the back, which is 1.1 times 0 0.6. So there's going to be two of those as well. 1.1 <clears throat> multiplied by 0 0.8, that is 0 0.88 square meters. 0 0.8 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.96 square meters. And 1.1 times 0 0.6 times 2 is 1.32 meters squared. So if we add all of these together, what do we get? We get a total of 3.16 square meters. Okay, so uh, we know, ah, however, we need to, I was thinking that's quite a small number, but we need to paint 30 of them. So we need to multiply this number by 30. So 3.16 square meters multiplied by 30 water tanks uh, that comes to 94.8 square meters. So we need enough paint to cover 94.8 meters squared and we know that one tin of paint covers 12. So how many 12s go into 94.8? Well 94.8 divided by 12 is approximately 7.9 and so we're going to have to have eight um, tins of paint. So that's eight lots of 26.99 and eight times by 26.99 comes to 215 pounds 92. So that is our answer, 215.92. Okay, so question number nine. Um, Andros has an oil fired heating system. In a 30 day period, he used a full tank at a constant rate per day. At a different time of the year, the amount of oil Andros uses per day is one third of the rate. So how many days will it last? Well, if it's one third of the rate, then that means um, it will last three times longer. So therefore it will be 30 multiplied by three, which is 90. Just think about the context of the question. Just because it's one third, um, don't think it's got to be one third of 30, if, which would be 10, or that would be completely wrong. If he's using less oil, then it's gonna last longer. So the answer is 90 days. Uh, use reverse calculation to show a check of your answer. Well, the, um, the question was 30 times by three is 90, which is a fairly 
um, it's unlikely we would have got this wrong, but if we wanted to check it, we could do 90 divided by 3 equals 30, or 90 divided by 30 equals 3. Why you would do that, though, is um, kind of beyond me, really, because these calculations are kind of harder. It, division is harder than multiplication, and as I said, it's unlikely you would have got that that wrong anyway. But there we go. That's, uh, that's what they're looking for. Question number 10, uh, we want to work out the median number of trains late in a day. So that is the middle value. So it's going to take a while to fully understand what's going on here, although it does help us over here. So we know that there was one train late on two separate occasions. There were two trains late on four separate occasions. So let's write down in order the number of trains late in a day. So there were two ones, there were four twos, there were three threes, there were two fours, two fives, a six, and a nine. So let's um, cross off the edges and work our way into the middle. So this is gonna take a while. So we're gonna keep going until we either expose one in the middle or it might be two in the middle, depending on whether we've got an odd or even number of values. Uh, we've got an odd number of values because we've got one in the middle. So therefore the median is three. Okay, Lena says the median number of late trains in a day from this information is a good estimate of the average number of trains late over the period of time. Um, it's a bit of an ambiguous question this because you can argue it either way, but as long as you write down something sensible. One good thing about the median is it excludes any outliers. So we've got this ridiculous day here where there was nine uh, late trains in a day. So maybe there was you know, some extreme weather which it would be a bit of an outlier. So it would ignore that value there. Um, so that you could say the, the median is good because it ignores extreme extreme values, extremely low or extremely high. Um, but for me, uh, I would go along with uh, Lena is not correct. Um, so not correct because she's not considering the number of days when there were no trains late. We've been given very little information here. We don't know how many days she's been out checking train times. It does say over a period of time. Well, that period of time, okay, let's just be a bit ridiculous about this. This could be a period of uh, of 20 years, and these are the only number of late trains she's, she's got, and all the others were zeros. Very unlikely, but um, if she was doing this over 20 years, and these were the only number of late trains, and all the rest were zeros, then um, the average would be much lower than three so you know again it depends on the context we've not really been given the context but you know as i say you can argue that the median is sensible you could also argue that the median is not uh, a sensible way to um, estimate the average okay question number 11 the first thing we need to do is work out the area of this circle the formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared so it's going to be 4.5 times by 4.5 times by pi and uh, 4.5 times 4.5 times by pi is 63.617. Um, depends whether you use 3.142 or just the pi button. I'm not gonna write down every digit on my calculator. Um, okay, so this is the area, and sorry, this is in meters squared. Okay, and we know that she's gonna plant 40 flowers per square meter. So we need to multiply this answer so 63.617 times by 40. Um, since this is sitting on my calculator, I don't need to worry about rounding. I can just type times 40. And I'm getting 2544.69. Again, a fairly nasty number. And she's planting four times as many red as white. So red to white, the ratio is four to one. So therefore four fifths are red and one fifth is white. So all we need to do now is calculate four fifths of this number here, 2544.69, which is still sitting on my calculator. So when we're working out a fraction of an amount, we take our total, we divide by the number on the bottom, and we multiply by the number on the top. And what do we get? We get uh, 2035.75204. So since you can't, um, well, you can only plant a whole number of flowers. I would say, well, that's approximately 2036, although I think they'll accept 2035 as well. And that is the answer to that question, 2036.
Okay, and on to the, uh, the final question um, in this particular test. Okay, so uh, what we need to do first of all here is work out the total amount of, well, we're working out the, the mean weekly wage. So that's the total amount per week divided by the number of workers. So first of all, how many workers are there? We know it's 40 actually, we don't, I was gonna say you could just add these up, but we've been told it's 40. Now 10 people earn 320, so multiply that together, that's a total of 3,200 pounds. So let's make create a new column called total. Oops, sorry, that's supposed to be a multiplication sign. 370 times by 13 is 4,810. Eight times 420 is 3,360. Seven times 470 is 3,290. And two times 520 is 1,040. So the total um, given to all of the 40 workers is the sum of these numbers here, and that comes to 15700. So the let's work out the mean, that's going to be uh, 15700 divided by 40, which is £392.50. So that is the mean. But he wants to increase the mean by 4% plus £10. So in we need to increase this first of all by 4%. Now the multiplier for 4% is 0 0.04. It's the decimal equivalent of 4%. In other words, it's this number divided by 100. And this is the multiplier that we would use if we're working out a percentage of a total. But we want to increase by 4%. So the multiplier we use is this number here, plus one, which is 1.04. So 392.50 multiplied by 1.04, that comes to 408 pounds 20p plus 10, so therefore 418 pounds and 20 pence. And is Jim correct? Jim thinks the new mean weekly wage of these workers will be more than 415. So we can say, uh, yes, Jim is correct as 418 pounds 20, kind of obvious this, but uh, uh, it's a, kind of a bit annoying writing these worded answers, but um, just to make, make sure you don't lose a mark, um, it's good to do it. Jim is correct as 480 minus 20 is greater than 400, was it 415 I think he said. There we go, and that is the end of this paper.